Hey, I'm Kev Kev, Mr. Cole, welcome back to MotoGP17 and the manager career. Let's here we are around these lovely rolling hills in dusty and heat. I believe. I may be incorrect. If I am, say so in the comments below. But this is the furious and fast manager, I would say. Get loads of chicanes. Heavy breaking points. Most importantly, speed everywhere. As we approach 150 miles per hour, break around 50 meters for the first corner. Ease the bike into that apex. That's a rising. And then the first chicane into the left and right. There's some lots of curb there. That's where our opponents tend to go riders right into that right hander, so it could be an overtaking spot in the race. And down the second. Bit too much speed into the left, that compromise for the right. Hopefully take that cleaner in the race. And then perhaps the most wonderful chicane there. Not quite a chicane, it's sweeping S's, but into that right, then downhill through the left. I think Rossi highlighted that on one of his stock events videos. That's how beautiful that chicane is, or that sweeping S is, and I can only agree with the doctor on that. It's pretty wonderful. Here comes another chicane into the right, then the left. And they get up the hill, then downhill into the one of the most tricky braking zones on the calendar. At least it used to be in previous games. It's no longer a kind of really noticeable bump going into that braking zone. So as long as you break before dip you should be fine I'll start braking before you know going over the rise and slightly wide in the final corner but it shouldn't be too bad though if we can get up the power early oh a bit too tentative on the power there as now we go down this front stretch we're going to be seeing loads of slip streaming battles in the race only a 202.6 that's not good at all. Race engineer does not look impressed there. As he goes session in through. And look at that, I told you it's not good. Two seconds off the pace as Fanati looks like he's grabbing a home pole. You know, Kinnett and Mir with Martin fourth, Mutfi fifth, Burger sixth, and all the Italian third row, of course, at the Italian Grand Prix. Get your drinks out for that. And Magello, and out the top 10. So named after where he got his first race win in real life. Because I have totally given up on pronouncing the rider's name. We've got Rodrigo in 12th, Nerdy in 13th, McDonald in his favourite qualifying spot, it seems, in 14th. 1.8 seconds off the pace alongside Loy Alert. Can be careful into that first corner. Top Persia, Confield 18th, Nets Bet Injured, Dead Boys of 20th. Where's our teammate? Not last in 32nd. So a decent qualifying for the use of trends, but can they go even better in the race? Yes, here we are looking at the Moto3 grid. And a very happy Fanati getting a home pole. As well as we look further down the field and there is Magnum in 14th. It's compared to the sit throw of Danilo and Kornfeld. Looking at the 8th throw, Ramirez. We've got the Italian in his home race in 23rd. There's Bo Herrera Arenas. Bezeki as well in his home race, the Italian teenager. He's just looks at the back with Magnum. Grand Prix about to start any moment now here at the Mugello circuit. It's one of the most technical and spectacular tracks on the whole calendar. No clues from a previous teammate of not being a stopwatch king. Well, he definitely was, if we're going to get the qualifying influence of Kuma. But let's concentrate on the race though. So I'd like to go out for this five lap. Ooh. And in this are already up to Travers once again with Jugo with a poor start. And really belting that river at the moment, heading towards the first corner. It hasn't cost us too much. We should break around 40 meters. And there comes Loyola around the outside. I said be careful of him. He looked around the outside, but didn't make a move. Let's go up to 12, up to 11, up to 10, maybe. He's using all the curb. Again, eased wide. 
And now down the inside, oh, McDonald just holds on into sit. God, that goes very hairy there. This so it feeds, oh, up to fifth. Well, McDonald runs right at that was DJ and Antonio. Whoa, where's he going? He's allowed everyone back by. Down to 12 for McDonald. A terrible chicane. I said be a bit safer into the first part. Definitely did not heed my words, did McDonald. Here we go. Up the hill now. We just fast right. And a second fast right. Oh, down the inside of the German. Almost into the back of Antonelli though. We need to run wide and let Hotel back by. When McDonald dives down the inside. The German back up into 11th. Using all of that curb. And now we're getting towards the final sector. McDonald's sector once again, this final sector. Oh, down the inside of Antonelli. He did not expect that, did he, Italian? Got Bashini in front in ninth. And then we've got the Sky Italia twins down in eighth and seventh. And all he uses all the curb and some. And look at around the outside. I told you it's all the. What about bravery in that chicane? And McDonald's definitely is brave. Up into eighth. Oh, almost up into seventh. Could still be up into seven. Let's see if he can get on the power. Oh, well, pretty similar, but he's going to have some beautiful slit stream heading down this front stretch. And looks like the right in front's not getting any slit stream either, as someone's going very slowly. Is that DJ Antonio? Did he get there for about streaming, buddy? Where's his teammate? Oh, he's leading. That's probably right. Let's, oh, the two Scots clash. That allows. The Italians through. McDonald, oh, he bashes his way past Magello, I think that is. Because he did the first half, not opening that, no surprise. 2 8 flat. And yes, he holds on to fifth. And oh, the Italian gets into the back of McDonald, and again he outbreaks himself into the left hander. Now that was DJ Antonio, but he does it not quite. Holds on to see if does McDonald. But he's got some work to do into that chicane. Now down the hill into the first part. Pajero holding him off. And into the left hand. Oh no, McDonald gets the run on the outside. Takes fifth. But there's over a second gap to the top for a battle in Nike L, as you can see. Got some work to do, does McDonald, even to hold on to fifth. Look at this, elbow to elbow. Oh, and he's right into the right hander. Into the left, he's taking all the curb and handsome again. Very aggressive on the curves, is he? On this place. But aggression pays round here. On the speed sake, it's Kinet pass. Martin up into third. It's got Mir up there. So here comes McDonald hoping to get the run through the chicane. And then into the final corner. Too much curb again on the exit. Gotta be careful of that. As he eases down the inside. Fanati leads from Mir. But here come the chasing pack now. Zamora gets again sit stream from the Italian down this front stretch. Some beautiful stretch stream as well. Look at that. Could have him at the line. He does. Up into fifth. Fanati does a fast set at 203.5. But McDonald does even a faster one. By a few tenths of a second. Now here comes the Italian down or inside into the first corner. Look at that wheel to wheel and oh McDonald bashes his way by. So he goes slightly wide in the left. And take a tighter line into the right maybe is. No, Magello did the fastest up there, 203.2. Two. Right, a couple hundredths of a second. Here we go into this tricky corner. He actually braked early for once. Put it into the left, slightly wide into the right. Not a good run. But he's certainly latched on to the top four now. It's McDonald. Beginning with Martin, who seems to have dropped back from the top three, has he? Someone looks around the outside of the Spaniard. And takes that fourth position. And it's like Kinet and Mir are now in the top two places. With Fanati, Itty's favourite son, down to third. At least in Moto3. I know it could have changed in recent times. 
But here's McDonald charging halfway through this race. Let's try and get in a slipstream here out of this right hand heading towards the final corner through the chicane as well. Remember, slightly wide for the right hander. Not too bad though. Now here comes McDonald's Bravey. Oh, over that curb. And look at that run towards the final corner. Can he lead? Will he be the hare for the Greyhounds behind? He will. As McDonald takes the lead. As we approach the penultimate lap of this race, it's flying by. As now here come the Red Arrows, beginning with Kenneth, who takes the lead at the line. There's something to store in our memory banks. Here comes Mir as well. And here comes Fanati. I know he just gives us a bash instead. It's all Mir very aggressive on Kenneth and all Fanati aggressive on us. It's all going off at the first corner. Oh, it's down the inside of Mir. Oh, getting into that right-hander. But no room there. It's Minux down the inside of Kinnett. Oh, beautiful move from the champion there. On the double champion. Now here comes possibly another champion in McDonald. Oh, he just bashes his way up. Aggressive. But that's why we love him. And hate him as well. And the agent. He takes the lead from Kinnett. Now he's trying to build the lead before that front stretch. As you saw on that previous lap, coming out of the final corner, we're leading, but not the line. And of course, the most important thing is the lead at the line. So let's see if we can build that gap for that front stretch. Much better into the corner there. Into the right and in. Ooh, just slightly wide. Both he gets on the power early enough though. That's a good run through the chicane. That's now here we go. Very important corner into that final. And it's drifting slightly wide. We got on the power early enough. Shouldn't harm us too much. As there's Regetto up into third. Ahead of Mir. Of course, with Kinnett behind as well, McDonald could be leading this championship, leaving Magello. And look at that, he built enough of a lead that he wasn't past that line. He's head on to the final lap. Be careful of the dive bomb, though. No. The first corner, but hogs that apex. And holds on to the lead. And all oh, goes slightly wide though in the left hand up. Compromise them into the right. Again, hugs that apex beautifully. But it could allow Kinnett to have a run here as Mir is battling for third. Oh, but he's definitely sorted out his line through that chicane. Lovely stuff from McDonald. And now downhill, we saw how aggressive he was on the previous lap. He definitely carries speed into that right hander. Into the left. Use it to the apex. Got on the power hard. As Magello takes back third at his favourite circuit. Could he battle with Kinnett maybe for second heads? The Spaniard's been dropped by a second here by McDonald. He's just powering away on this final lap. Gets to the front. He gets some confidence, doesn't he? He uses all of the curb there. Got Kinnett behind. He is battling for second. And there's Mir there as well. We got a freeway behind. But it's not for the win. Let's heading into the final sector. Look at that. Can it actually gained back a couple of tenths a second in that previous sector despite battling for seconds? About the final corner. Such a long and winding final corner so I just got to wait to nail that power I see McDonald did it then as he crosses the line and takes another victory in Moto3 
on that man he enjoys definitely at home on that bike now as he did the fast lap on that final lap when you needed it and look at that Magello was second ahead of Kenneth and Mir beautiful ride by the Italian and home turf for 19 fifth Martin Siff, oh, there was seven, but V8, Bashini 9th, DJ Antonio 10th, but I got down in 11th. Disappointing. Antonelli in 12th, Nuredin 13th, Loy 14th, Suzuki beat Suzuki to the final point by just about a couple tenths of a second. The top Persia goes to Kornfeld in 22nd, pretty decent result actually, good to he's on a Peugeot. Nispus Mahindra's Dale Porter in 24th. Where's our teammate? In 30th. Move back. Move forward slightly, did Kuma. But it looks like you got into a set streaming battle there for 29th with Bo, Ty Rider, and Bezeki. Disappointment result on the home turf for the teenager. We finished Patrick in last. So in the championship, McDonald regains the lead by five points ahead of Kenneth. And look at that gap to Mir already. 23 points to the reigning champ who climbs ahead of McPhee. Up into third in the championship with Martin up into the top five. Here are Fanati as Bulliga drops down to seventh after his very disappointing race. And there's Magello up into eighth ahead of Antonelli with Otel rounding out the top ten. Bashing 11th, DJ Antonio 12th, Loy 13th, Guevara 14th. Nuredin up to 15th ahead of Ramirez after a good point scoring finish for the Malaysian rider. Danilo 17th, Binder 18th and Sasaki with his first point. Of the season climbs to 19th. There's 19 riders have scored so far. With Suzuki round out the top 20. There's Kumar in 28th. And Finnish Patrick in last. As in the constructed standings, it's Honda by less than a race win now. 17 points ahead of Mahindra. With KTN drifting back slightly in third on 86 points. And Peugeot yet to score. As yes, once again, there's a very happy McDonald around a wonderful circuit. And look at all the clones, even for the Sky Italia team, they've got clones. There's clones everywhere. They're being overrun. Yes, be scared, McDonald or happy. I think he's actually happy this time. As look at that weekend recap, no crashes. And what a beautiful double one there is for final position and championship position as we achieved the race objective. Kumar didn't, but once again, he moved forward in the race. Maybe got caught up battling, but you know, still a solid performance for the Indian. As he improves his corner while McDonald improves his thought management corner and body position. And look at all those credits and reputation earned as well. Lots of reputation. Bloody hell. As now there is a transfer window. You know what this means. We're going to manage a Moto2 team. We can afford the Calyx. But the big question is, who's going to ride the Calyx? Should McDonald move up to Moto2 finally? Or should he stick with Moto3 and go for the title again? Let me know down below. I will actually read these comments and wait to record the next episode until after this episode. So it will be recorded on the day. And I'm very interested to see what you will say so so i'm up for watching and i will see you next time in moto 2 or moto 3